Hi there, Chris here, and this is a bit of a continuation of my previous efforts in the pre-shading. And in the end, I had asked the question whether or not you guys wanted to see what I was going to do to finish off the pre-shading. And so I'm going to quickly show you guys just kind of what I went through here just to kind of get this iris model from War Machine up to kind of, you know, any kind of tabletop standard, really. And you can see, like, the pre-shading, you know, like, you can see it's still a little bit spotchy. It's, it's The paint didn't go on quite as nicely as I had wanted, but it works. And, I mean, like, we're not, you know, entering this into any kind of competitions or anything like that, so we're not going to really worry about anything like that. We just wanted to do a nice tabletop and, you know, looking good and, you know, what have you. So, of course, as I was recording this, your good old pal Chris forgot to turn his mic on, so I have to record this after the fact. So this is going to be a sped up little version, and I'm just going to quickly go through it. As you can see here, I'm just simply working with ghost tints. Okay, Ghost tints are a really good pigment for this job, for pre-shading a model and then throwing the color on, because the color is transparent. And, you know, that some of you, it, that might seem really obvious, and to some of you it might not. And this is really for the guys who were kind of like, well really like that does seem kind of obvious but i didn't know why i didn't think of that and really that's the added benefit of doing appreciate is that the transparent color that and it's a pure transparent color it's you know like they refer to it as candy because it's completely clear but it has the pigment behind it to change the overall value of what it's sitting on top of and that's the real benefit of using this technique with these colors that you can create your deep sh shadows up to your bright highlights and then throw your color on top and then bang you have all your color variations and everything like that. Now, of course, you can go in and add, uh, you know, like edge highlighting and a bright, little slightly brighter colors or details on top of it and what have you. You can see the real nice thing here with like the, how it's sunk in to the details, adding a little bit of depth and separation in some of those little panels on her, on her armor and such. It's really kind of nice. It's it's a really fast, easy way to get color down onto the model. And of course, the more layers you lay down the deeper the color gets and you can see i was just touching them all there and i'm showing you that the ghost tints most of the time dry pretty uh, glossy and so you but you can th always throw a matte on top of that and you know uh, just take that you know shininess out of it here i'm going to show you with just the metals now i was initially showing the example of you know lead belcher or any of the other darker pi metallic pigments but here I'm using a metal medium, which is just the pure me uh, met metallic flakes. Thinned it down quite a bit with some medium, and then I'm just laying it right on top. And if we had left that shadow really deep, that really would have worked out fairly nicely. It gets, you, to the eye, you can see those transitions, but on the camera here, it doesn't quite show as well. I was going to use yellow to bring the color up. But as I was talking through the process that really I should have laid the yellow down first before laying green down. When going with these ghost tints and you know these transparent colors, you're better off going with your brightest colors first and building downwards to your shadows. And here I just threw in some plasma fluid because it's a nice cyan and it looks really nice and you know sitting on top of some of the green and I was just deepening up some of them shadows there. Also throwing a hint of blue in there, kind of getting a bit of a turquoise going on just to create some color variation, kind of have some fun. I was really just kind of playing with the colors at this point here and just seeing, you know, just throwing a little bit of blue into those shadows and you know it, it creates a very interesting effect. It you know makes it a little bit different. You know you don't always have to go with the straight kind of green into your shadows. You can create some color variance in there and you know like that and that's one of the fun parts about you going with this technique with pre-shading and throwing the color on top of it and so i need, needed a quick break here and so i would just come back in and i'm gonna do some browns here for the wood and the uh quiver of arrows and things like that and i'm just quickly throwing the color on here we're not gonna be entering this into any kind of competition or anything like that we're just simply laying color down having some fun with it and you know we're we're just having fun and you can see how nicely how the ghost tints just go on they create a little bit of tint really i think what would have been nice is to throw a little bit more yellow into this brown just to warm it up a bit it's kind of you know it's kind of chocolatey it's really kind of dark and i think a little bit more yellow would have added a nice leather effect of course we could have laid yellow down first and then put brown a light thin brown on top of it to go to where we want and when really when you're going with this kind of style of painting where you're appreciating and then you're laying your colors on top of the 
you know, black to gray to white uh, base, you're essentially going about it like a uh, printing. Here, I was just having a little bit of fun. I just thinned down some of the brown here just to throw on the, the green, just to desaturate it up a bit and just kind of pull the color, uh, just so it's not so overbearing. And I was just having a bit of fun playing with it and, you know, kind of seeing where we go with the with ghost tints and what you can really do and how many layers you can build up. And so I was just kind of experimenting with it myself. But again, like I bring it back to my point of the, of if you know your color wheel and you know your uh, cyan, magenta, yellow color wheel, that you can really, this really, really make this technique work for you. And by that, I mean, you're doing it similar to a printing method where you're imagining it's like a white paper and you're adding black further down to create your shadows and then you're throwing your colors on top, but you're only working within three colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And then you're building all your colors from there in, in variants of more magenta, more cyan, more yellows. You know, cy uh, yellow and cyan make green. And you know, here I was just using a bit of the plasma fluid just to throw some blue into that metal. Also help to create a, help the illusion of that shadow in that point. But really, that's about it. It's, you know, it's just really kind of playing with the color, having fun. I threw that metal down on her legs and on her shin guards here. And then I threw the ghost tint on top of that metallic. And it gave me a nice little metallic green on her armor. Again, you know, it's just having fun. It's just quickly getting something done. You got some color variants going on there. And then for her chainmail bits there, we're going to throw some Agrax Earthshade on there. And for the face here, I threw a little bit of brown in there. Because you can see how she was kind of slightly appreciated on the face. But it wasn't kind of going how I wanted. And so we said, ah, we'll throw some flesh color on top of it. Now, when you throw, start throwing on flesh colors and stuff like that, more opaque colors, you kind of destroy the initial illusion of, you know, the pre-shading. But that's fine because you can also be using the pre-shading as a bit of a guide as to how you want to shade the model and where shadows would fall and... You know, you can allow the, the initial paint to, you know, be a guide for you and make it, you know, the highlighting and shading process a little bit easier for yourself. And that's perfectly fine too, you know, it, like throwing opaque colors on top of that. And I see it a lot, a lot with a lot of painters. They'll depreciate it and then they're throwing opaque colors on top of it. And I don't really understand why, because I'm sure they understand how to throw shadows onto a model, but whatever. So, Agrax or Shade, throwing it onto the metal bits just to deepen that metallic medium up that I threw on there. It's, and it takes it down a bit, but it gives you that nice chain mail. But really, that's about it. It was just kind of really kind of quick, kind of, you know, dirty, and, you know, a little bit of fun. But that's it. Hopefully, you kind of got something out of that. And if you didn't, well, too bad. <laughs>